Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So I have been art journaling for nine and a half years now, and I have filled about 46 sketchbooks. And today in this video, I will show you some of my sketchbooks. At the same time, I want to compare the differences between spiral bound sketchbooks and perfect bound sketchbooks. So I personally really prefer using perfect bound sketchbooks because they're more like real books to me and um, the spine in the middle is like perfectly binded together so there's no big gap in between. And I found most spiral bound sketchbooks to be really heavy. Um, for example, this one. So this one is a uh, Kenton art book, mixed media. And um, I found the, uh, the metallic spiral to be taking a lot of weight of this whole sketchbook. At the same time, this is hardcover, and this one has 40, 40 pages, 40 sheets of watercolor or mixed media paper. It's really, really heavy. And this one is a smaller spiral bound sketchbook. This one is the B paper, heavyweight drawing paper for mixed media. I think the spiral is, is metallic too, but because of the number of spirals compared to the larger one, it's not as heavy. This one is the stone paper. This one, let's see what it's called. This one is called the stone sketch pad. So the paper is really special. It's water resistant. I'm not sure if you have heard of uh, um, notebooks or sketchbooks resistant to rain. Um, so the paper is really, really heavy, even though um, the sketchbook is really thin. It's a uh, stone paper. And again, the spiral is made of plastic, so um, this one is not way too heavy. And these two sketchbooks here are perfect found that I really prefer using. So after one or two years, since I started art journaling, I started to buy all of my art journals with perfect bound pages. This one is a Moleskine art book for um, intended for dry media only. And this one is a Moleskine watercolor album for watercolors with heavy weight 140 pound watercolor paper. I bought a lot of spiral sketchbooks when I first started art journaling and then I stopped buying them because I didn't really enjoy the quality of having a spiral in the middle, like cutting cutting all of the, uh, the, the drawing spread off. So this one, I started this sketchbook in May the 19th, 2013. So that's like eight years ago. I think this was my first urban sketch done with my uh, Vancouver Urban Sketcher buddies. We sketched at uh, Longsdale Key in North Vancouver. It was a great memory. I could still remember that day, my first time being out there and sketching. Okay, so one of the problems I found with a spiral bound sketchbook is that it's really difficult to do like a panorama sketch like this. If this one is a perfect bound, then I will sketch this, uh, this boat scenery this way probably and cross the uh, the middle in this case i kind of have to uh, flip this to the side and sketch this way and when viewing this sketchbook it's kind of uh, i feel like it's a little bit distracting to see because we have to um put the sketchbook this way to see the, the picture better so that's one thing i i don't really enjoy using spiral bound sketchbook is that uh, the middle is, is, is cut off i can't really do a cross spread sketch so since the beginning, I really enjoy sketching food and drinks, things around the home. And this one was another urban sketching outing with my sketcher buddies. This one was uh, was done at BC Ferry, Ferry Terminal. So again, as you can see, sometimes if I want to do a landscape sketch, I had to flip the sketchbook this way. Overall, the paper quality is actually pretty good. The paper is 138 pounds, very heavy. And um, yeah, I think it works out for, for watercolors. Another urban sketch, then somewhere around East Vancouver on June the 9th, 2013. 
2013. This is exactly eight years ago. Wow. Some more urban sketches. So as you can see, eight years ago, I was still kind of playing around with page compositions, and they don't look as uh, as natural, as interesting as right now. For for here, I think having two sceneries on the same page is way too busy. If I have only one scenery here, and do some more object sketches down here, I think the page is gonna look better. But it's good the uh, the right hand side is looser, has more empty space with objects, so it's not a bad page spread. This one was done at White Rock. Home sceneries. And again, another urban sketch done in downtown Vancouver in Gastown. I could still remember that day. This was one of my earliest urban sketches was not easy to do. It was not easy to sit outdoors and, um, you know, sitting on a busy street and having a lot of people walking by and looking at what you're doing. Sketching outside my window. I think a lot of you are quite familiar with this view. The two houses and the bushes around. I've been sketching this view numerous times over the years. And I think one good side about the spiral sketchbook is that I could focus on one page at a time instead of like right now I'm working on perfect bound sketchbooks which opens up here with uh, no spirals, no gaps in between so I have to think about the whole spread. For a spiral sketchbook, I only needed to focus on one single page like this at a time so it's not as overwhelming. And I think some of you might be familiar with this view. I sketched this view in my previous video. After I sketched the uh, the two figs, I sketched the view outside my kitchen window, which is this window. This is from eight years ago. Wow. Another ambitious sketch done on Granville Island in Vancouver on July the 7th, 2013. So this one took me about how much time? 11.30 to 1 p.m. So one hour, 30 minutes. It's a lot of time and effort. And another good thing about spiral bound sketchbook is that it could be easier to hold, to fold around and hold it on my lap this way compared to, um, to other sketchbooks like Perfect Bound, like this one sometimes. This kind of Perfect Bound sketchbook might be too shaky to hold. Well, a spiral bound sketchbook is more sturdy. If we fold it up this way, panorama sketch on Guarmo Island on the same day. I really like these two sketches, these two panoramas. So I think no matter what kind of sketchbook format we have, we can always play around with composition. Like when sketching a scenery, we don't have to always take the whole space, the whole page to draw. Sometimes we can make divisions on the page like this one. Two slices of panoramas. Very interesting views. Compared to if I just pick one of the views and do it large. And the scenery is really suitable for panorama sketches. Around the home. And again, we can divide the page into two or maybe more frames to sketch. Um, landscapes or urban lands urban urban sketches. Taking the whole page here to sketch the view of the kitchen. And this one was done at Stanley Park, Third Beach, on let's see, July the twenty eighth. And again, so when we're using the whole page, we don't have to sketch all the way from here to the bottom. We can always frame it in a smaller frame like this one in a thinner uh, landscape, almost a panorama format. So it looks more interesting compared to all the way down. And then we're able to write titles and write down some journal notes in a white space here. So in my early days, I like to write a lot sometimes in my art journal. For example, like this one, there's another way of art journaling. It's that you don't have to stick to filling up the whole, the whole spaces. With, uh, with drawings and paintings. 
you can always take your take your time and space to do a lot of writings as well. And that's it for this sketchbook. This one is made of stone paper, as I mentioned before. I started on August the 4th, um, 2013, and finished it on September the 4th, only one month. So I'm done in the kitchen. And these are actually better urban sketches. This one was done at Chinatown on August 10th, 2013. This one was done at Dr. Sun Yat-sen Garden on the same day. I really, I kind of really like this sketch. It's been a lot of, um, it's a great composition and they use the colors and the shade of green really well. Here, just another sketch done from my windows. My kitchen. I think I was using uh, water soluble ink because the lines are kind of dissolving a little bit. Stuff found at the beach. And these were actually sketched from photographs I took on uh, a weekend trip to the Rockies, the Rocky Mountains. And because I was traveling with a large group, it's really, really hard to stop to stop even for like 10 minutes and sketch something. So I yeah, sketch all of these from photographs at night from my phone. The Rocky Mountain landscapes. A lot of writings. It's kind of like a, a diary at the same time too. There's some more sketches here. This one was done at Olympic Village in Vancouver, the giant bird statues. Some more urban sketches done with my sketcher buddies. Old vintage cars and shop fronts at the historical museum. Very loose sketch done at the historical muse museum with a water soluble ink. I think the effect is really interesting. And because this this uh this paper is water resistant, it's stone paper. So when, when I was using a uh, water soluble ink, the ink didn't run didn't dissolve way too crazy like compared to other papers. Some more stuff I'm using like a blue um what is it called I think a blue watercolor pencil for these sketches. Okay. Okay, this one was, again, a very early sketchbook from 2012, from October to November. So really, um, I have early sketchbooks. Very simplistic drawings and use of watercolors. I think I was like sketching just one thing on a page, basically. I think this is my third sketchbook in my art journaling life. Very simplistic. Even though I was trained in, um, in visual art, I couldn't sketch really fast in a nice way. So it really takes time and practice to get better sketching faster and nicely at the same time. Just one thing on a page. And because the spirals are so big, it's, it's impossible to do like a cross page sketch. It's really hard to do any interesting composition on this kind of format. Oh, so here I was trying to do like a cross page sketch of the two packs of ham here. It didn't look really successful because it looks really cut off here with the giant spirals. I didn't really like it. It seems like it's cut off. It's very distracting. Okay, just about usually just one thing or two on, on one page. Okay, 
Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to show you these Perfect Bound sketchbooks. So both, both of these two are actually Moleskin. But uh, with different series. This one is uh, the Moleskin art book for dry media only. This one is the Moleskin watercolor album intended for watercolors with uh, watercolor paper, 140 pounds. Let's start with this drawing book. Okay, so here the larger format. What I love about the Perfect Bound sketchbook is that it's exactly like a book that we can design um, the pages just like the design of the magazine pages or other picture book pages. There's no spiral in the middle that's really distracting to intervene with your composition. And I was able to fit many more objects on the same page spread. And for the art journal design, we can use big and small frames. For this one, I was recording the snowy scenes observed from my windows using different sizes, like comic books, different size panels. Another fun way to do art journaling, to use frames. Some more frames. Some more. It's a great way for storytelling when we frame our sketches and the, in these ways. Okay, a lot of frames, even this one is a really tall scroll format. It's really up to you. I know some people even when they're using perfect bound sketchbooks, they don't like to cross the, uh, the spine here because they found it still to be uh, distracting. Their drawings or, and paintings are cut off in the middle. It's okay. So the choice is really up to you. If you want to do cross page, you can do it or you can stay stay at one page at a time. Okay, so as you can see, even though this is a perfect bound sketchbook, I'm only focusing on one page at a time instead of doing cross page sketches. I'm gonna move on to this Moleskin watercolor album. The paper is really heavy. It's, I think it's 140 pound watercolor paper that I started last year in May, in the middle of the pandemic, self-isolation. Cross-page sketch like this, and a cross-page here for my soup. Another cross-page sketch. And another cross-page sketch. I like the way that the, the orchids is crossing over the page instead of being stuck on a single page. Okay, let's see. So one thing I found the Perfect Bound sketchbook is really convenient that we can do a panorama without flipping the sketchbook this way. So here I can do a, like a really huge panorama here by drawing a large panorama frame across the page. So this is one of the advantages of perfect bound sketchbooks. Cross page sketch here, very loose. This peach is crossing the page here too. When doing like a cross page sketches, I found the whole spread it looks more active. Even though it's only crossing the page just a little bit, just a little bit, the whole spread looks like a whole united interactive space of artworks okay that's it okay so that's it for today's sketchbook quality review video so thank you so much for watching my video if you like my video please click like and leave me a comment below if you have any questions or concerns about the uh, other other small details or qualities about these sketchbooks, just let me know in the comment section. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel as I'll be updating my channel every week. And I will see you next time.